Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our sister Donna, to give thanks for her life, to commend her to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. We begin with singing. And you may be seated for our hymn, 532 hymnals or on the front page of your funeral bullet. <coughs> Verses 3 and 4 will be together.
as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, say we glorify you. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave, to open the way to eternal life, say we praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Join me in the prayer of the day. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Donna. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. I would like to invite up Larry, uh, nephew of Donna, to come and speak. A few words of holy remembrance. <laughs>
She loved to volunteer and organize events. A lot of her volunteer time was spent at church pulling Christmas putting on Christmas patches. She especially loved how to get younger generations more involved. And the boy with, and boy was hard to tell Don and Ellen because she <laughs> she absolutely loved to take care of others and was constantly making a new friend as a stranger. I mean, if you were anybody, she would come up and hug you. She didn't know her. <laughs> Donna was always happy when she could garden, craft, or bake, never turning down a cup of coffee when off. Donna loved to travel, especially when I meant spending time with family and friends. She often loved laughing. She was often laughing, goofing around, and always trying new things. When Rob and Jean were in middle school, Donna saw them ripping around on their Trail 70, and she had to try it. She hopped on and immediately hit the gas. She drove, she drove the bike straight up the tree and flipped it over. <laughs> in the words of an aborigine, you were born a child of light's wonderful secret, and you return to the beauty you've always been. Donna was truly a light in the world, and it will be a sadder place without her here. But she touched every one of us, and has left us one of the memories. We'll cherish her prayer. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We continue with uh, our readings today, uh, oh, our, our song today, excuse me. Uh, we couldn't resist including a Christmas song from the pageants, uh, <laughs> Christmas program. So please join me in singing, Go Tell It on the Mountain. It's number 70 in your hymnals or on your bulletins. Recite them 
to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Find them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. The first reading. Please join me in the psalm, which is Psalm 23, and print it in your bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Our New Testament reading today is from Romans. The eighth chapter, the Apostle Paul is speaking about God's love in Christ Jesus. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? No one. For Christ Jesus, who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. In all these things we are more than conquerors, through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please rise for the reading of the Gospel. Jesus said, the Holy Gospel is found in the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I'm so thankful that I didn't miss out on Donna here at church. It's going to be so strange not to have her uh, joining us for Sunday morning. The last time I was here on June 16th, she was sitting right there, I think. Her voice was a little poor that day, but she got up and read anyway, didn't she? And uh, we got to hear her one more time, we didn't realize. Uh, having coffee together over there, uh, from the time that I came, she would pull me aside and tell a story. <laughs> I just marveled at that. She just pierced your eyes with her eye contact caught your attention fully 
and you knew it was really important, and it was. And she told things um, that maybe a lot of people, you know, would be too shy to share, uh, but she felt it was important for us to know, for you to know her story and what had happened. And uh, I think it was Kay and I were talking a little bit uh, about this. Uh, sometimes, you know, she would get into a story and you didn't know the ending yet. But she would just have to stop and chuckle for a little bit because it was so good. <laughs> we will miss that. We will miss her joy and her, her uh, uh, smile, the hugs you mentioned, uh, and her involvement here. I was so glad to be with the family, though, last night because, again, I only got in on a couple years of her life, and she has lived this whole vibrant life. You know, in, in Minnesota, uh, that was really her home for many, many years, uh, starting starting right after, pretty much after high school, it seemed like, and uh, until about 14 years ago, and raised her kids. I asked how it was as a mom, to have her as a mom. Um, did, did she do the same, uh, pull you aside and uh, tell you a story? Uh, Kenny says, she, you remember her being active and playing with your kids and uh, getting them involved in 4-H, so many projects, um, uh, having them sing at events and, and getting them involved in other things too, and welcoming them and their friends, and I guess the grandkids too, then later uh, at, the, at the salon, uh, there was always things to eat. There was foosball at the house in the basement, pool table, and I hope I'm not making this up. <laughs> Uh, and and uh, just a, a fun place to be. In the salon, something that was striking to me was the, the temporary tattoos. <laughs> that she was just uh, advertising and getting the whole town, everybody to do. And, and uh, I had you all raise your hand last night. Who had a haircut by Donna? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, everybody that was around, it seems like. So, uh, you will miss that, and those are wonderful memories that you will hold and pass on um, uh, as a family. I, I uh, loved also the story about Donna Day at the elementary school in Miranda's class, uh, at least. Uh, she, she liked doing crafts, she loved doing things with kids, and uh, what an opportunity to have all these cute little second, third graders, I don't know, uh, tuck, tuck, and older, and uh, no one else's grandma did that. So, so there she was, uh, helping and leading the kids in craft days, craft day at school. Here at, at Elmdale, it was no different. Although, you know, a lot of people, by the time they're in their 60s, say with Sunday school, I've done my time. Uh, I've done that. I'm, I'm finished. I'm moving on. But and that's about when she started here. She was a Sunday school teacher in Minnesota too, I think. But uh, way over in Pheasant, uh, when I had my first parish, we heard that Sunday school was starting up here again. And uh, and um, I I brought uh, actually I'll show you what I have here. I have more at my office. I brought her files here. I just thought you might want to look through them later. They are well organized. Some of them are kept in um, typing paper, paper, <laughs> papers, a little kept together in folders. I grabbed a couple things that she had made um, for class. This says birthright, and then this says blessing. That must be the story of Jacob. <coughs> and Esau. And it also reminds us of our life in Christ, doesn't it? Where we are given a birthright in our baptism, and we are given the blessing of Christ in our lives, and moving and shaping and giving us life. I also have her little date book here for 2015. She's written down 
who came that day for Sunday school? <laughs> and uh, here is the, you know, some of your names are in here. <laughs> I don't wanna, don't wanna embarrass you at all, but uh, you'll have to flip through that later and uh, check it out. It must have been about the time that it was all breaking loose again here. And so that has, that was a blessing. You know, it was kind of like, um, kind of uh, startling, I think, probably, to have them move back up here. You guys, I, I have to hear more about that move. But she and Kenny did something huge here at Elmdale Lutheran. I mean, maybe for such a time as this, as we hear the story of Esther, that's why you ended up here. Because it made a difference, didn't it, to have her around this church and constrict, conscripting people to participate in uh, the Sunday school Christmas program. And uh, my own son couldn't say no to her. He tried, but <laughs> he had to play the violin for Christmas this year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so uh, that was all part of telling the story. Uh, she told stories about herself and her growing up, you know, starting out by saying, I was never supposed to make it, but here I am. Uh, and, then, and then down to the Christmas uh, and the, the stories of Jesus that are all marked up in her Bible and in these folders here. Um, it just goes with the Deuteronomy passage. Recite them to your children. She adopted children to do that for. And talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Find them as a sign on your heart. If we learn anything about Donna, it's how important this story of Jesus Christ, our Lord, was to her and she believed for all who would listen to her. We have the shepherd song, too, and I'm, I'm sure I could find it here in this, in this uh, uh, file, in the story of the shepherd who leaves the 99 and goes after the one. Um, Pastor Cole sent a little bit back about her. He was the, working with her with that Sunday school, um, those classes. He said, Donna was one of my favorite people I have ever had the joy of meeting. She just loved everyone and tried so hard to get everyone to hear about the love of Jesus. I don't know any other people who are dedicated enough to start a Sunday school for one kid. You know? And, or who would be daring enough to interview everyone in the church so that she could tell their story on Sunday mornings. Did that really happen? You, yeah? That's, that's cool. <laughs> I don't know that either. It's usually a pastor thing that gets done. Uh, and she was the first to voice uh, support for mission work, too. She started that rummage sale a month ago and had to leave the emergency room so she could get to the rummage sale and handle things and help with it. Isn't that right? He, he says, I, I added some of that myself, but uh, Cole said Donna was one of a kind. What a beautiful heart. Today in our gospel reading, Jesus is comforting the disciples. They are afraid by what he is saying that he is going away, but he's going to prepare a place for them so that where he is, they can be, we can be. And I can just imagine instead of Thomas speaking up, Donna's voice piping up and saying, Lord, we don't even know the place. How can we know the way? <laughs> and then he answers this story that she has been telling. I am the way and the truth and the life. This is the story that spurs her on. And why are we saying the Christmas song, go tell it on the mountain? Um, and we're going to sing, I love to tell the story. Jesus was her shepherd. He was with her in her valleys of the shadow of death. He is with us to where he is. We may be also. We know his presence. We knew his presence. A lot of times we glimpsed it and heard it. And uh, um, 
I just stumbled across her baptismal date, which she made sure to get me uh, a couple months ago, uh, May 10th, 1959. I don't know how that fit with her mother passing away. Maybe we could figure that out. Uh, that's a long time ago now. <laughs> Um, it could be that she was responding to her, her valley of the shadow as she watched, I, I don't know if it was sudden or not, but if it was after that, she was seeking out her shepherd to be with her in that time, that very difficult time when her mom died when she was 14, uh, in that same year. And he is, was with her then, he was with her all her life. He came to us through her words and her teachings, and he is here with us now. This is the story that just stands out for us today and comforts us and brings us the hope of the Good Shepherd who died and rose again, from whom nothing can separate us from his love. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together our hymn of the day. There's four verses, Donna. And uh, um, it's a different tune than in the hymnal, so just use your bulletins. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. <laughs> Thank you. 
knit your chosen people together, so that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life. Give your whole church on earth and in heaven your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage to all who mourn and a sure and certain hope in your loving care that casting all our sorrow on you, we may have strength for the days ahead. And we who walk as yet by faith, lead us so that we may bear witness and tell the story of your light and your life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's pray the prayer that our Lord is still teaching us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. I have just one announcement uh, that our, we will go directly to our fellowship time and our um, meal and eating together. Uh, and please stay and, and, and join in and share those stories that you have about her and also our witness to God's love for her. Um, there are restrooms here just around the corner. And I invite you to join me in the table prayer, which we will probably, we will sing a cappella, I think. Be present at our table.
Send me him as I love to tell the story number 390 or in your funeral bulletin. Mm -hmm. 